ready on Zachary Guerrero? Court is calling 2021 CR 811B, State of Texas versus Zachary Noel Guerrero. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the state. Defense. Tim Moyner for Mr. Guerrero. And are you Zachary Noel Guerrero? Yes, Judge. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. If you review that with your attorney, did you understand it? Yes. Are you the same Zachary Noel Guerrero who's placed on deferred adjudication and cause number 2021 CR 8111B for the offense for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon on January 18th, 2022 for a term of four years? Is that you? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. All right, state. Violated condition number one, on or about the 19th day of August, 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Zachary Noel Guerrero, committed the offense of aggravated robbery in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. Right, Your Honor, state waives all their violations. All right, any objections? No. Did you understand by plea and true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, Find you guilty, sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Yes. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Is there a proposed agreement? Yes, Your Honor. The proposed agreement is seven years PDC on 2021 CR 8111B. Uh, the state is going to take into consideration cause number 2023. CR 10419A. Is that the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Are you asking me to follow this agreement, Mr. Guerrero? Yes. Are you waiving your right to appeal? Yes. So, does anybody want to tell me what the aggravated or robbery is about? I can summarize it, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, my client, or a uh, uh, a lady went to her truck or a key. I, I keep saying a truck, but it's a Kia uh, to go somewhere. And in the driveway, when she got to the driveway, there was two individuals in her car, uh, not my client. There was an individual she noticed across the street, um, which was my client. Uh, when she approached the car, the, the co-defendant, Lamas, was in the driver's side and he had broken the column and he had rummaged through and had some stuff collected. There was a man Ray Barfield, I believe, in the passenger seat, uh, who evidently had a gun in his lap. And when she approached the car, I, I believe her statement is that she, he pointed at her. I was more concentrated on her. But that's where the aggravated part comes in. Uh, they, th those two ran from the car. Uh, my client is walking near a Dairy Queen a, a little bit later with the guy that was in the driver's seat. Uh, and when the police contact them, all the stolen items from the car are just like on the floor, like on the sidewalk, right? Uh, the person with the gun is waiting. They are able to ultimately identify the person with the gun with the aid and assistance of um, my client and the other co defendant, and do not have to defend the case too. Um, all the lay witnesses' accounts would be that uh, my client was across the street in a lookout capacity, um, and that this was the, I guess, the incident of a homeowner walking out and, and walking into her car being burglarized in the mess. The kid in the driver, in the passenger seat, and then pulled into that and explodes the fire. Well, you were given a chance on for education. I mean, you're where you are now because of your actions and nobody else's. I've had plenty of clients before where they just been the lookout and guess what it turns into capital murder charge in Texas. If you're just a lookout for somebody and they kill somebody, guess what? It's just like you killed them as well. Doesn't matter if you have the gun or not. If you're with somebody, and you all decide to go rob a gas station. And if they go into that gas station, they kill somebody. 
it's just like you were in the gas station killing somebody as well. It's sort of like they're your agent and you're responsible for their actions. So you had a chance on probation. And what time did this happen? I, I don't know. It was nice. It was I, nighttime. I, I don't know. That it was early enough to where the homeowner was going to well, run an errand or something, right. but I don't know. So had, had the street lights come on because I gave him a curfew. And obviously you didn't follow the curfew because guess what? If you would have been not where a, you were supposed to be, this wouldn't have happened. Now you're going to prison. And how old are you? 23. You're 23. You're crying. And I know you're crying. You're crying. And I know you're crying because you don't want to go to prison. And you're just like, I was just across the street. But as I said, in Texas, if you're with a group of people and you all are burglarizing vehicles and somebody pulls a gun, it's just like you pulled the gun, whether or not you pulled the gun because y'all are working together. You understand? Nobody wants to go to prison. You had a chance not to go to prison and turn your life around. I gave you deferred adjudication, tried to help you by tightening up your schedule a little bit by putting you on a curfew and you still find these people to hang out with who mean you no good and mean society no good. I don't understand why young people are breaking into vehicles. Now you got to ask yourself, is stealing a car worth seven years of your life? Breaking into somebody's house and getting caught. Was that really worth seven years of your life? All of these crimes that people are committing, they need to be asking themselves, how much of my life would I be willing to give away to commit this crime? for just some foolishness for a vehicle that's going to end up being destroyed because the column is broken instead of just doing what's right. I tell people all the time, life, yeah, it can be hard because things happen to good people sometimes, but nine times out of 10 in your situation, if you would have just followed the rules, guess what? You would not be in the situation that you're in now. And then you come to this court, I give you deferred adjudication to get your life together. You wouldn't be in this situation where you are now. That aggravated robbery case, the range of punishment on that is five to 99 years of life in prison. You understand? Yeah. So I know seven years is hard. And let me just tell you, prison life is hard because when you go to prison, much like the Bear County Jail sometimes, People just won't leave you alone and let you do your time in peace. Always got to watch over your back. But you could have been in the free world. So now what's going to end up happening, I'm going to follow the agreement and I'm going to sentence you to seven years. But let me just tell you something. Do not become institutionalized because people who go to prison, you know what they say? I will never be in this situation again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the child that my mom wants me to be. I'm going to get out. I'm going to act right. And then you know what ends up happening? They get out, time when they smell free air and get to their house. There's a celebration. You're home. Everything's going fine. Mm, I would say about 80% of the people, they stay on the right track for about 20 days. Then their old friends start coming around. And then they're right back before another judge with another offense. If you continue the way that you're continuing, you're gonna find yourself living at the prison and you're gonna be the oldest person in the prison. In Texas, they have repeater status. And if you come back, you'll be coming back as a repeater and that bumps up whatever felony you have, it bumps it up punishment range. And then if you go back to prison and come back, you're gonna be a habitual. And for some felonies, your minimum is gonna be 25 years to start with. And you're gonna look up and you're gonna be at the prison and you're gonna realize you're like 50, 60 at the prison. You understand? Yes. All right, this is what the court will do. There's an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon. The court will grant the motion, find you guilty. Court will sentence you to six years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. There's to be no contact with Aiden, A-D-A-N, or Tamara Alvarado. 
Patricia Santos. Stephon, S-T-E-P-H-O-N, Brown. And who's the complainant in the other case? Judge, I Oh, you know what? I may have it in the indictment. She is listed on the indictment. The victim's name is Samantha Rios. All right, and Samantha Rios. And I'm going to order restitution to Samantha Rios. Is there any objection from either side? There you are. All right. There's restitution, if any, to Samantha Rios and cause number 2023-CR1041-9A. Would that be joined several with this uh uh, we can say jointly and severally liable. Who are the co-defendants? It's going to be uh, Damien. Just one second. Let me write jointly and several. Okay, who? Damien, D-A-M-I-E-N, Lamas. Okay. Ray Barfield. Is that B-A-R-E? No, just B-A-R-F-I-E. All right, jointly and several liable with Damian Lamas, Yamas, Ray Barfield, and there's to be no contact with Damian Yamas and Ray Barfield. Although you may end up having contact with them at the prison, it will just be a matter of where they place you. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? Nothing from the state. No, no. You're welcome. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, yes Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. We can go off the record. You better change your life. Otherwise, it's not going to end well for you. Either you're going to end up in prison or either you're going to try to break into somebody else's vehicle and they're going to end up shooting you. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's get the facts straight. She loves a verbal ashtray. Never blowing smoke when she gets pissed. She's quick to castrate. Love her on a good day. Love her on a bad day. Either way, she's here to stay, stay, stay. Call her holy, 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 holy.